So let's take a look at this. This is uh, James Dalma, very well-known machine learning expert, real expert in Tesla and Tesla's AI. And he was talking about RoboTaxi and you know FSD. And he said, of the pieces needed to get to RoboTaxi, because there was this you know debate whether it's going to be regulatory approvals is now the biggest critical step, or is it the technology? And you know, of course, Elon and James said it's the technology, uh, the fleet is the most important part. No significant component will be left out because it's enormously valuable and difficult to substitute resource. And I think he's referring to the fleet being obviously the 6 million Tesla cars that are out there. They have inference computers also. And the fact that you have the fleet already out there, uh, it's obviously a big uh, leg up for RoboTaxi. So Elon said, pretty much, it has been staggeringly difficult to make generalized self-driving work requiring all that you describe above and more. The investment in training compute, gigantic data pipelines, and vast video storage will be well over $10 billion cumulatively this year. So if anybody thinks that they're going to just catch up to Tesla, <laughs> Tesla spent $10 billion in training compute, data pipelines, and video storage. Now, video storage, and we'll, we'll, we'll show today that they're actually building more data warehouses. Maybe it's for their video storage, but that is nothing compared to the quarter trillion dollars in cars on the road with Tesla design AI inference computers being trained by the drivers. Can you explain um, this comment? Yeah. So, I mean, every car that Tesla has shipped since they started shipping hardware three back in whatever that was, 2019, I think, you know, has a one of the most capable inference computers on the planet. And a lot of people think that hardware three from a compute standpoint is not going to be up to the task of, of full self-driving or robo taxis. And um, this is a, a great point that James Dalma actually made in a conversation that we had. Um, if anyone's interested in watching it, it's over on Farzad's channel uh, between James Dalma and myself and Farzad, but he was making the point that the there are three main chips on the hardware three computer. You've got some CPUs, you've got some GPUs, and then you have neural net processing units or NNP. So the GPUs are about a hundred times faster than the CPUs because they can run these parallelized workloads. And so they're, they're running more things kind of at the same time um, that are not necessarily dependent on one another. Um, the CPU is a very linear process. And so everything that you do, the next step kind of depends on what you did in the last step. And so it really slows you down. Um, and then NNPUs really take things to the next level from the standpoint of being able to parallelize a workload. And they can run 100 times faster when you really take full advantage of them than a GPU on an AI problem where you've really taken a lot of the complexity of a software algorithm out of it and you are just hardcore crunching matrix math. That is what these AI neural nets do is that it's just huge, huge, huge arrays of numbers that are multiplied, added, divided, transformed. Um, and so you're, you're just doing basic arithmetic, but at a scale that is you know, unfathomably large. The version of FSD that we had until recently, where we had hundreds of thousands of lines of C code, that was all running on those CPUs that are 10,000 times slower than these NNP. And now that we have full end-to-end -end inference in the vehicle, that means that it's we've moved the complexity of the software problem that we're trying to solve from the slow CPUs into the fast NNP. Um, and there's going to be some stuff that's still in the GPUs as well. But we've we've moved the, the heavy lifting from our slowest component to our fastest component. And we've got a lot more headroom left to go there, actually. And so from a, a computer standpoint, Hardware 3 has a lot of capability that's left that's untapped. And that capability can be unlocked through better and better software. And we are still very early in our understanding of how to deploy neural net software. And you know, there's just a lot of capability that we have left 
um, to unlock on that front. And so that means that these, these computers, these hardware three R's that we now have millions of on the road are only a fraction as intelligent today as they're going to be. And one of the things that this allows you to do when you connect that computer then to a whole suite of cameras and you deploy them all over the world, now you have a 5 million vehicle roughly search engine that you can perform yeah. search on the real world for the data that you need to <laughs> plug yeah. into your, you know, send that stuff back to the supercomputer to train your neural net how to drive like a human. You have, you know, you have the vehicles that are in place to capture the video, but not only do you have the vehicles to where you can watch other drivers and all the things that they're doing, you also have a human driver that's piloting that vehicle that then is basically teaching or has the capability to teach the neural net how to drive like a good human driver or or oh, like yeah. a bad say hey this is this is a bad human driver please do not do what they do um you, you can write that type mm -hmm. of logic into it and so that is you know the the advantage that tesla has that still no one else really has even you know nvidia is really working to create some good general hardware and software for other auto companies to try and use to develop their own mm -hmm. uh, autonomous driving technology. And they're really uh, using an approach that they're making it flexible so that they can use whatever sensors they want, including LiDAR. Um, and if Elon is right and LiDAR is not necessary, which it sure looks like he's right, okay. then, you know, that you're, you're making a more complex system than is necessary and and going down a, a road that is a dead end and that that's going to make other automakers lives more difficult and it makes nvidia's life more difficult to develop the the hardware and the software that's compatible with all those things in the first place and then providing these hardware and software packages to companies that really are not technically sophisticated enough to solve this problem, at least not any time in the near term. So they don't have, you know, there's not enough of these automakers that are committed enough to this path to be installing these hardware and software packages in millions and millions of vehicles so that they can even get this data in the first yeah. place. So it's yeah. more complex, it's more expensive. And because it's more complex and more expensive, it's not in enough cars on the road. You know, that's the very, if, if it was cheaper, you would, see it making more financial sense for a company to to be bold and it really just goes back and shows you how forward thinking and how much insight and <laughs> forethought elon had put into this to be putting out cars with these expensive i mean it's not that expensive but it's not cheap either you've got thousands of dollars worth of computer and camera going into these cars that the software wasn't ready yet and they weren't, it was all deferred revenue. And sure, they hoped they were going to get there sooner than they did. But, you know, they could have sold those cars for much lower prices. Much you probably yeah. could have taken $5,000 off the purchase price of the vehicle if you had decontented mm -hmm. those cars. And that mm -hmm. would have, on the one hand, seemed like it would actually be a better thing for the mission. More cars on the road at lower prices earlier on. But Elon mm -hmm. knew that eventually we're going to solve this problem. And not only did he know, but like they... People just do not appreciate, like I said earlier, how high quality that hardware three computer is and what it's going to be capable of. Um, yeah. And so they they knew that they were going to get there and they had the technical sophistication to make the right computer way earlier. Like even what NVIDIA is offering to people today is, uh, you know, you, you could probably benchmark it in how many ops per second that they can do and maybe they'll be close but as far as the the vertical integration and the sophistication um there's not going to be a clean package that is as capable from a compute standpoint and also runs inside of the power envelope that hardware 3 runs on like there's there's not even a better competitor alternative to hardware 3 today much less hardware 4 that's already shipping much less hardware 5 that will probably begin shipping in the not too distant future so you know people are just way behind they're trying to play catch up and um i mean this is one of the reasons why i have such high confidence 
in Tesla's very unique ability to monetize, mm-hmm. whether it's FSD, whether it's robo taxis. I mean, Elon seems to be very convinced at this point that they're really moving towards robo taxis. Uh, if they can get there, great. I'm going to just kind of base case my hopes for the future on they can make a lot of money just on selling FSD SaaS to consumers. And even that is like a wildly optimistic financial picture for the future. So obviously not financial advice, but no one else is even close to in a position to do the things that Tesla's in a position to Yeah. All right. Well, so let's just quickly review. I mean, this is like a huge, huge step or at least clarification, right? Tesla is spending a lot of money, $10 billion cumulatively this year. He clarified that. Nobody knew that Tesla was spending $10 billion. Um, And he's referring to FSD. I mean, I'm sure he's he's adding this to all of AI efforts, but $10 billion per year on AI efforts. Then, of course, he explains that that's nothing that's nothing compared to the quarter trillion dollars in cars on the road with Tesla designed AI and French trips. Everybody seems to forget Tesla has these cars out there. They all have inference trips already. And you've just explained that even hardware three um, and, and of course, hardware four, they're all very capable and they will be able to do robo taxi. Some people were already concerned that maybe it's a uh, old tech, but what you explained was that, you know, just the way neural nets worked, that uh, it's a software that was, you know, James Dalma and you were explaining. So this is very good news. Tesla has so much uh, money that they're spending and uh, data warehouses, data pipelines. We talked about video storage. And then it blew my mind a little bit when you explained how, yeah, as the cars go by, they're the search engine. They're bringing in videos, but Tesla is able to, you know, really take care of all that and take out the nuggets. They have a massive real world AI application. No one else has a real world AI application at this point, right? There's all this discussion that, oh, you know, did you hear about stability AI? They spend a, they, they're spending a hundred million dollars on data warehouses, but they're only making two million dollars per year on revenue. Because how do you how do you monetize Chat GPT? How do you monetize you know queries? generative AI, it's not yet full, but here's a real world AI that's actually going to make cars autonomous. So he also said, Elon, that reality is far too complex and weird to solve the data problem in simulation. This was a question that many people have. Can't just NVIDIA, who is the leader in simulation, just take in videos on YouTube, then, you know, do a bunch of simulation. Of course, simulation helps. And I think some people are saying, maybe it takes you 90% there, but that 10%, you need to have, you know, actual physical touch points. Yeah. Um, I was talking to the CEO of a robotics company. I'll drop that this week weekend. And he was saying that simulation takes you 90% there, but the 10%. Now he said that cars, you might be able to simulate that because the whole point of a car is not to interact with the world. And you don't really need to know, like, you know, the, how heavy the car is on the ground, for example. But a bot simulation won't be able to do it. You need you need to interact with the world. And as you are, that's not something you can just simulate. What is it like to touch a peach? And is it too hard to, you know, holding the peach? Or, you know, when you when your foot hits the ground on a gravel versus, a, you know, a bouncy material, how does that feel? You can't simulate that. Yeah. But, uh, but for Elon to say that... Uh, you know, reality is too complex and weird to solve the problem in sim. That is yet another reassurance that this is not well, that's, something that anybody can copy. That's further explaining why it's so important for them to have the fleet. Because the only if sim is not enough, the only alternative that you have is you have to get the real data. And that's why people want to do sim is because getting the real data from the real world is hard. They don't have. They it's don't, not they don't have possible yeah. unless you have devices that are out there in the world. And you can't afford to put the devices out there in the real world unless you're selling a consumer product at scale. And that's what most people are not doing that are especially startups, you know, your AI doesn't have consumer products in the real world at scale. Neither does open AI. Um, You know, like we're, gonna have to see how something like rabbit ai does like those and these uh the humane pins <laughs> and like those types of yeah. things you know apple has consumer devices out in the wild 
and they're going to have a lot of capabilities or you know potential mm -hmm. if they can structurally right now both you know google and apple seem are very concerning to me as far mm -hmm. as their ability to execute um but they both of those companies do have the pieces in place that if if they can pull their heads out of their butt mm -hmm. they could have yeah. massive futures uh in this space as well because you need that real world data for so many things and you know i understand where the the humanoid robot guy that you're talking to where he's coming from the the physics side of the simulation is way harder for bots than it is for cars but the physics honestly is not the hardest part about solving full self-driving. It's interactions with other intelligent beings. That's the hard thing. And, and there you do exactly. get back into yeah. another area yeah. where the, you know, trying to simulate the variables of how this thing is going to interact with you or what choices is it going to make or where is it going to go? You know, that is just as hard if not harder to simulate than things that are hard to simulate for physics and <laughs> and bots are going to have that problem as well um but that's you know that's why you have to have that real data it's not just is it physically possible for this collision to occur it's what is that thing going to do i don't know or do i oh if i'm actually smart and i can model how whatever that thing is whether it's a child whether it's a cat whether it's a bird whether it's a human driver um, or just an inanimate object that's moving in a strange way, we have a complicated enough neural net in our brains to where we can look at something, instantly recognize what it is, and instantly spin up a model of mm -hmm. how it is going to travel. Mm -hmm. And that is different than just, you know, people think about humans interacting with the real world as like it's like it is a computer simulation you know we think oh when we're trying to play baseball and we're, we're tracking the trajectory of the the flight of the baseball or the flight of the soccer ball or that the, you know we're, we're doing these complex equations kind of subconsciously in our brain and that's not what it is at that's all it happening. really does it much more like a neural net would do is it's like i've seen this exact thing before and i've created a general application and i can understand okay i've seen this and now i've just internalized that into this complicated neural net system and i know how to interact with that thing even though i don't really understand how it works